Papach's Moth, about the author, Erin Hottie Roy, an architect by training, is a novelist and screenwriter. Her first novel, The God of Small Things, from which this extract has been selected, is the winner of the 1997 Booker Prize, a prestigious literary award. She now lives in New Delhi and is an activist. Papachi's Moth, Mamachi had started making pickles commercially soon after Papachi retired from government service in Delhi and came to live in Ayamenam. The Kadayam Bible Society was having a fair and asked Mamachi to make some of her famous banana jam and tender mango pickle. It sold quickly and Mamachi found that she had more orders than she could cope with. Thrilled with her success, she decided to persist with the pickles and jam and soon found herself busy all year round. Papachi, for his part, was having trouble coping with the ignominy of retirement. He was 17 years older than Mamachi and realized with a shock that he was an old man when his wife was still in her prime. Though Mamachi had conical corneas and was already practically blind, Papachi would not help her with the pickle making, because he did not consider pickle making a suitable job for a high-ranking ex-government official. He had always been a jealous man so he greatly resented the attention his wife was suddenly getting. He slouched around the compound in his immaculately tailored suits, weaving sullen circles around mounds of red chilies and freshly powdered yellow turmeric. Watching Mamachi supervise the buying, the weighing, the salting and drying of limes and tender mangoes. Every night he beat her with a brass flower vase. The beatings weren't new. What was new was only the frequency with which they took place. One night Papachi broke the bow of Mamachi's violin and threw it in the river. Then Chaco came home for a summer vacation from Oxford. He had grown to be a big man and was, in those days, strong from rowing for Balial. A week after he arrived he found Papachi beating Mamachi in the study. Chaco strode into the room, caught Papachi's vase hand, and twisted it around his back. I never want this to happen again, he told his father, ever. For the rest of that day Papachi sat in the veranda and stared stonily out at the ornamental garden, ignoring the plates of food that Kachu Maria brought him. Late at night he went into his study and brought out his favorite mahogany rocking chair. He put it down in the middle of the driveway and smashed it into little bits with a plumber's monkey wrench. He left it there in the moonlight, a heap of varnished wicker and splintered wood. He never touched Mamachi again, but he never spoke to her either as long as he lived. When he needed anything he used Kachu Maria or baby Kachama as intermediaries. In the evenings, when he knew visitors were expected, he would sit on the veranda and sew buttons that weren't missing onto his shirts to create the impression that Mamachi neglected him. To some small degree he did succeed in further corroding Ayamenem's view of working wives. He bought the sky blue Plymouth from an old Englishman in Munnar. He became a familiar sight in Ayamenem, coasting importantly down the narrow road in his wide car, looking outwardly elegant but sweating freely inside his woolen suits. He wouldn't allow Mamachi or anyone else in the family to use it, or even to sit in it. The Plymouth was Papachi's revenge. Papachi had been an imperial entomologist at the Pusa Institute. After independence, when the British left, his designation was changed from Imperial Entomologist to Joint Director, Entomology. The year he retired, he had risen to a rank equivalent to Director. His life's greatest setback was not having had the moth that he had discovered named after him. It fell into his drink one evening while he was sitting in the veranda of a rest house after a long day in the field. As he picked it out he noticed its unusually dense dorsal tufts. He took a closer look. With growing excitement he mounted it, measured it and the next morning placed it in the sun for a few hours for the alcohol to evaporate. Then he caught the first train back to Delhi, to taxonomic attention and, he hoped, fame. After six unbearable months of anxiety, to Papach's intense disappointment, he was told that his moth had finally been identified as a slightly unusual race of a well-known species that belonged to the tropical family, Lymantridae. The real blow came 12 years later, when, as a consequence of a radical taxonomic reshuffle, lepidopterists decided that Papach's moth was in fact a separate species and genus hitherto unknown to science. By then, of course, Papachi had retired and moved to Iamenum. It was too late for him to assert his claim to the discovery. His moth was named after the acting director of the Department of Entomology, a junior officer whom Papachi had always disliked. In the years to come, even though he had been ill-humored long before he discovered the moth, Papachi's moth was held responsible for his black moods and sudden bouts of temper. Its pernicious ghost, gray, furry and with unusually dense dorsal tufts, haunted every house that he ever lived in. It tormented him and his children and his children's children. Until the day he died, even in the stifling Iamenum heat, every single day, Papachi wore a well-pressed three-piece suit and his gold pocket watch. On his dressing table, next to his cologne and silver hairbrush, he kept a picture of himself as a young man, with his hair slicked down, taken in a photographer's studio in Vienna where he had done the six-month diploma course that had qualified him to apply for the post of imperial entomologist. It was during those few months they spent in Vienna that Mamachi took her first lessons on the violin. 
The lessons were abruptly discontinued when Mamash's teacher, Lonsky Typhenthal, made the mistake of telling Papachi that his wife was exceptionally talented and, in his opinion, potentially concert class. Mamachi pasted, in the family photograph album, the clipping from the Indian Express that reported Papachi's death. It said, noted entomologist, Shri Benan John Ipe, son of late Rave, John Ipe of Ayaminam, suffered a massive heart attack and passed away at the Kadayam General Hospital last night. He developed chest pains around 1.05 a.m. and was rushed to hospital. The end came at 2.45 a.m. Shri Ipe had been keeping in different health since last six months. He is survived by his wife Sashama and two children. At Papacha's funeral, Mamachi cried and her contact lenses slid around in her eyes. Amu told the twins that Mamachi was crying more because she was used to him than because she loved him. She was used to having him slouching around the pickle factory and was used to being beaten from time to time. Amu said that human beings were creatures of habit, and it was amazing the kind of things they could get used to. You only had to look around you, Amu said, to see that beatings with brass faces were the least of them.